today. Well, it's exciting to be with you, April. And yes, I think uh, we tried this once before and uh, technology (coughs) did not agree with us. Not at all that day. (laughs) Yeah. So here we are again. Well, and we're ridiculously thankful you're here. And I want to share with everybody the Freedom Fridays we've been doing for quite a few years now. You've been on a couple with us, but just to catch up anyone that's new watching us, these Freedom Fridays are all about the freedom to share whatever we want to share. And uh, usually we have a theme of uh, your leadership, your passion, and your perceptions. And so I'd love for people to know, first of all, I met Richard in 2005 when he was speaking for the National Association of Realtors in beautiful San Francisco. And you were speaking about the truth about stress, your one of your wonderful books. And uh, I've since given you, uh, when I taught high school, one of my students actually did a visual for you that I did, I took a picture of when you had your neck brace on at that time. We were, I believe in Myrtle Beach, I think at the time. Myrtle Beach. Yes, and uh, I've been attending your Star Maker since that day. Uh, and I've uh, gotten to meet a lot of amazing people you've been to, and you have set the stage for what I wanted to become my stage. And I have been working and I just wrote a piece about, or did a video about that yesterday and commented uh, and shared that with a couple people. So Richard, tell us about anything you want people to know about you first. Well, like you were talking about April, all of us have a stage. Mm-hmm. And the challenge I find for a lot of people is that um, the stage can be very frightening. Mm. And it depends on the the foundation that you approach it with. You know, um, this thing called life belongs to us. And it's my life. I get to design it. I get to live it. I get to experience it. But if I'm not careful, and this is what I find with a lot of people, in fact, I was on a uh, mentoring uh, session this morning, and we were talking about that everything about the life that you and I have is based in one of two foundations, one of two platforms that we build on. And one of those platforms is all about freedom. And that's the platform where we design around our life around our belief, our trust, and our faith in ourself. And if we do that, then what we're doing is we are living from the inside out. Because belief is personal. Trust comes from that inner belief. And the faith is when the two come together. And you know you're living that, April, whenever you have that belief, because belief gives you a sense of calmness. Uh, For me, trust gives me clarity. And faith gives me the confidence uh, to see the unknown as an adventure that God has put in front of me for me to experience. The other foundation is a foundation where if you accept this as the guiding point for your life, you're living from the outside in. And that's where you build your life on doubt, worry, and uncertainty. And if you build your life on that, then you live every day as you live in doubt, you live with skepticism. Every day that you live with worry, you live with anxiety. And every day that you live in uncertainty, you give yourself permission to procrastinate. Mm. And, you know, I've learned that for me to have the life that I want and to have the ministry that I want with people, because what I do to me is a ministry. I agree. That I have to, I have to live that foundation uh, through my belief, my trust, and my faith, first of all in God. Mm -hmm. and then in myself. Amen. And it was interesting because I filmed uh, not long ago a TV show out of Atlanta with a gentleman by the name of T.C. Bradley. And we were talking about this foundation and the where the origin, as far as I'm concerned, of these two foundations began. And when God created the Garden of Eden, it was pure. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. And everything about that was about the belief, the trust, and the faith that they had in God. And then 
one day this little serpent or whatever you want to call it uh, okay. crawled in and offered them um, to take a bite of an apple or whatever it was. And at that moment, that solid foundation of belief, trust, and faith uh, fell apart. Because now as you watch and you, you see what happened with Adam and Eve, they came to the place where they were filled with doubt. They were filled with worry. They were filled with uncertainty. And right there came the division that has carried with us through today. You know, if you look at the children of Israel, the only time these folks ever got into trouble was when they lost their belief, their trust, and their faith in God. Every time they started doubting, worrying, or being uncertain about God, they created quite a mess for themselves. And the life we live today, right? <laughs> yeah, and if you look at life today, that's where how I've really grown to understand this. Mm -hmm. When I stand on that foundation of belief, trust, and faith, then I have the calmness, the clarity, and the confidence mm -hmm. to perform on the stage that God sets for me. And the stage is wherever you go, where your presence creates value. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I ever step off of that stage and I get to the place of doubt, worry, and uncertainty, then my whole life takes a different turn. Right. And what I watch today is how many people make a choice because you choose the foundation that you have for your life. And it's a choice. Every day we make a choice. And if I choose that worry, that doubt, and that uncertainty, then all of my life is focused from the outside in. But if I choose that foundation of belief, trust, and faith, then my life comes from the inside out. And I'm my strongest when I'm living from the inside out. It's so absolute truth. It, I, I literally spoke about that in the video yesterday of how long it takes people to learn the value of living from the inside out and the value of understanding. I, and it was a labyrinth, believe it or not. That was something that really helped me see the visual perspective of that. And something I'm writing about now is that so many people are challenged to want to step within the layers, to, to want to decide to live from the inside out. And that creates our life work, right? <laughs> yeah, but the inside out can become a very uh, fearful choice. Mm -hmm. Because if I choose to live from the inside out, then I bring certain other aspects to my life. I bring the concept of accountability. Mm -hmm. I'm accountable for my life. Outside in, I can blame everybody and everything. But inside out, it's me. It's my choice. It's my life. It's my design. It's what I choose to do. And, and so what I look for in people, first of all, if I'm to bring value to a person, I got to be able to figure out, first of all, what foundation are they coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay. And why have they chosen that foundation for their life? And help them to understand that every time you choose to live from the outside in, you've actually given up control of your life. Sure. So, you know, when I started this crusade that I'm on uh, 30 plus years ago, my, my, my desire for people has never changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work every day to help people understand there is a better life. I agree. And, but you know, if I'm living from doubt, worry, and uncertainty, that's hard for me to see. Because mm -hmm. what am I doing? I'm looking at everything that I feel is wrong with my life. And I want people to understand there's more for your life. It's, there's better out there. But you have got to want that to the point that it becomes your purpose with an agenda that you're committed to, to every day improve your life. And then I also want for people, I want them to be smarter. I love that. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing how many people stop being a student at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, we have fun because every Friday morning, 
I do a live question and answer time with people. And it's really fun because we have a Zoom classroom um, and we invite people to come spend an hour with us on Friday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And we have a question. Like our question this past Friday was, what is the greatest lesson that your parents taught you as a child? And how have you used it? And it was interesting because some of the lessons that people shared with us were negative lessons from their parents mm -hmm. and how they've had to learn to turn that around. But, you know, being smart is more than just having a book education. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's about understanding the experiences of life. Um, you know, your ability to help people and my ability to help people, a lot of it comes from the path that we have walked. Yeah, absolutely. Because we walk with people through our experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the great thing about experience is that it gives you insights. But the thing to me that makes it more powerful is it gives me the ability to know how to ask the right questions. I agree. You know, and the greatest way you help people is knowing how to ask the right questions. Completely uh, agreed. And, and when we, when we know that and we can guide people to learn how to fish rather mm -hmm. than us just giving them the fish, we bring value to people. And then the third thing that I want for people is I want people to be stronger. Agreed. And sometimes people don't understand what uh, strength is. Strength is not how the world sees you. It's how you see yourself. Absolute truth. Because if the world sees me one way, then I live with that perception. Mm-hmm. But if I trust myself, I believe in myself, I have faith in myself, my presentation of self mm -hmm. becomes stronger. And you know this, probably one of the, probably second or third most powerful philosophy I've ever written mm -hmm. is that the greatest statement of respect that can ever be paid to any of us is that we have a positive presence that is present when we're not present. Mm -hmm. And when you reach that point, you have a strength that generates respect. You have a strength that creates trust. You have a strength that can eliminate doubt that other people have. But it's not automatic. No. It, it, takes, it takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of consistent persistency on our part mm -hmm. to every day be able to prepare ourselves. You know, it's very easy to become internally lazy. Too many experience yeah. And, that. Yeah. And what happens? We stop doing the things that we can do to improve our life. And if I become internally lazy, then I find it very easy than to turn around and live from the outside in. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the value of our life. No. It, Major, you can cover so much in so little time and it's so amazing. There's so many points I could take, you know, at least a multitude of pathways with. And yet uh, at, uh, one of the things that uh, I was asked recently, if you were to say in one sentence, uh, what, uh, problem you're solving and why it's important. What, what, what sentence would you choose? Uh, would that be a situation uh, involving me or a situation that I see in other people? <laughs> that, totally your choice. I, I really valued the question. It came from a, a individual I have a huge amount of respect for as well. And, uh, and so, and it comes back into uh, and I think this is so accurate for you is the way, I mean, another title you use and has been a foundation for you is behavior never lies. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, uh, that has been a 
challenge for some of my clients. Uh, one of them is still angry with that book today. <laughs> and, and it makes me laugh because, I mean, behavior never lies is a very powerful sentence. Well, it's accountability. Right. Okay, let me take what you just asked me and let me deal with it this way. Number one, uh, I don't believe in problems. Love that. I believe that a problem is a situation or an event that a human chooses to hang on to because whatever my life is, I choose that. Truth. So it's a situation or an event that a human chooses to hang on to so that they have a justification, a reason, or an excuse for what they don't want to be accountable for in their life. Mm. Um, you know, I used to work on a church staff and I ran the counseling division and I'd have so many people come to me and they'd want me to help them with their problems. Mm. And what I found with most people is that when they had a problem, it had a reason to it. Mm. It had a point of blame to it. It was something about someone or something that they used to justify their behavior. Mm -hmm. And when people have a problem, the majority of the time, they're not looking for resolution. They're looking for justification. And uh, I'm probably going to get you in trouble. That's all good. <laughs> that's okay. That's one of the challenges I have with what's happening in our country today. Mm is that I think a lot of the discord in our country today is because some people can't seem to let go of yesterday. This and is a they're using it as a justification for the discord that they're, they're creating. Now, I don't want your people to get me wrong. I believe in the right to protest. Mm -hmm. That's a constitutional guarantee. But right. I don't believe in using it as a reason to be disrespectful. And I'm going to tell you something, burning an American flag is disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it gives you the right to be destructive to other people's property. Right. And we create discord when we're looking for something to blame our behavior with. And we're not looking for a solution. And I, I think there's so many people in life who they're so built into problems that every day, all they do is they strengthen the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, I'm a person who believes that life gives us concerns. Mm -hmm. And a concern is a situation or an event in my life that I want to resolve in order to become better, smarter, and stronger. And anything in life can be resolved at the point of a concern. Mm -hmm. But, and the difference between a concern and a problem becomes the emotions we attach to it. Truth. Mm -hmm. And anytime you don't deal with a concern, you attach emotions to it, April. Mm -hmm. And every time you attach an emotion, you make the issue bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon it consumes your life. Oh. the fuel to the fire that you just talked about. I mean, if you were to look at, and you're right, this whole conversation, I wrote an article for Sack Better Business Bureau about how these uh, situations that we are all in, this crisis management we're all in, is an opportunity to ask tough questions and to determine who those tough questions are directed to. And it, including ourselves, what are we doing as an individual to make an impact on how we create resolution? And uh, even when I uh, work with individuals that do contracts, one of the things about a contract is a meeting of the minds. And as long as you stay in the facts and not the emotion, you're able to find some type of meeting of the minds. The challenge is so many people attach their triggers, their beliefs, their, their confusion or their contradictions or whatever terminology you wanna use. And that causes an outrageous amount of trouble. <laughs> and April, one of the things that I think is important we learn. Confusion opens the door to agitators. Oh, truth. Anytime you and I are confused, there is an element out there that will take our confusion and feed it emotional fire. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me right now, there are two great agitators that are killing this country. Mm. Number one is the media. They're an agitator. They don't report what is, they report what they know people are fearful of. Mm. And, Not and, all of them, but a, a majority of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the other agitator that I see right now is a group of politicians. Mm. And they're not designed to help us try to resolve this. They're fueling it. And fuel the fire. Mm-hmm. And what happens, and you know, you and I have talked about this because it's the question I get asked all the time. What percentage of people do you think ever use what you teach? What percentage of people do you think ever want to improve their life? Mm-hmm. 2%. 2%. <laughs> 2%. Yep. And the rest of people, they talk about wanting things to be better, but their behavior is against what they're saying. Mm -hmm. If you want to resolve something, you don't bring agitators to the party. Truth. If you want to improve, you don't hang on to all the emotions that keep you in an emotional prison. Mm -hmm. And it's, it really sounds good to talk about what you want to do with your life but I'll listen to everything you say, but I'm going to study your behavior because those three words are the most powerful three words that I've ever created. Behavior never lies. The essence of truth is not in words. Right. Exactly. It's in behavior. Mm-hmm. And so I look at what's, I look at what happens. I listen to a human life and then I lean back and I study the behavior. And the behavior gives me the truth. And I tell you something, you know, you want to upset somebody, confront their behavior, challenge their behavior, Mm -hmm. show them their contradiction. And because when you do that, now we bring into that word accountability. Agreed. And that's a word that I think there's a huge segment of our society that wants to erase. There are certain terms out there today that there's a huge part of our society that wants to erase accountability, responsibility, integrity, ethics. These are terms that are terms that are identification terms Mm -hmm. and they identify the real agenda of people. And powerful statement. and, and, And if we, if we don't get back to becoming, first of all, a nation uh, that believes in trusting God. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's another thing. If you look at what happens everywhere you turn, there is some element of God that's being attacked. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this country was founded on religious freedom. It was founded on belief. It was founded on trusting God. But yet, how much is this segment of society bringing in doubt? And and, and the interesting thing, April, is that you can't doubt without having worry. It's humanly impossible. And when doubt and worry come together, they create uncertainty. Uncertainty is what paralyzes us. And you think our country is not filled with uncertainty today? Ridiculous amount. Mm -hmm. You know, who do you believe today? Mm-hmm. Who do you listen to? Mm-hmm. And and we have we've got to turn this country around. And maybe we're off topic to where we started. <laughs> you know, but- it's all good. Uh, the opportunity and 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 I love. I mean, there's two things I really want to make sure we cover. The first one is that um, uh, you have some amazing opportunities to serve and to align with those that are ready to uh, receive the powerful presence that you have. Um, And we'll make sure to include that in all the commentaries um, in the posts that we share from here on out, including tagging you um, when we share it on your personal page and as well as in ours. Uh, And it'll be on YouTube as well. We'll share the websites, et cetera, that I told you I would make sure to do. Um, You've got a couple events coming up. You've got an event that you're going to close out this next year uh, and uh, one that we've 
uh, been so thankful for, we decided to copy to our, and our, not copy, I should say, um, learn from and make our own. How about that? <laughs> Create yeah. our, our, our stage. And uh, you'll be speaking with us at that uh, summit. Um, that'll be our sixth summit uh, that we're going to be doing in 2021. So we're going to be doing one right after another. Yours is in July. It's Star Maker, the 30th annual Star Maker. Mm -hmm. We're very excited to be part of. And uh, then you'll be speaking for us at the Trailblazer Summit led by Love. Um, that'll be our sixth, and that'll be in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So yours is in Florida in July. And so one of my clients uh, so kindly said the other day, I'm going to be busy traveling those two months. <laughs> said, because uh, we have uh, been blessed to cross paths on some of our clients. So uh, with that, uh, I want to make sure that everybody knows to check those materials and dates out, and I'll make sure those websites are included. The one question I want to make sure we end on, and uh, I think it's so, I think you set it up so wisely, is the challenge of all these divisions, I believe, has a lot to do with the lack of, of ability to see perception. And uh, everybody wants their perception to be the only one received as truth. And some of those truths are, are undeniable, right? And some perceptions are ones that we all have to overcome. I'd be curious, what perception do you uh, share with others that is perception you've had to overcome? And what would you encourage others to do? Well, one of the great perceptions uh, was uh, one of those things I was taught in my childhood mm -hmm. uh, by my adopted mother. Um, and uh, I was adopted, folks, when I was basically two weeks old, placed in a home. Um, and in that home, uh, my mother never wanted me. I was adopted because my dad wanted a son. Three sisters, none of us were brothers and sisters. Uh, but I can re go, I can take you back to the age of six, to the age of 16. And there were three statements that my mother made to me every day that I was stupid, I'd never amount to anything, and that she was sorry that they ever adopted me. And her greatest day would be the day when I was no longer in her house. So at the age of 16, I was given a suitcase and told me it was nice knowing me. And the greatest challenge I had in life was to unravel the emotions that my mother tangled me up with. Mm -hmm. Because so much of who you and I are comes from what we learn about ourselves from childhood. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know this as well as I do, so much of the emotional entanglements we have as adults and that we have to help people get through um, is helping them to unravel their yesterdays. Yes. And for a long time, you know, I thought, you know, parents don't lie. Parents can't lie. So whatever they tell you about yourself has to be truth. So I would, I would accept the fact that I was stupid and I lived with the fact you're never going to amount to anything in life. And you're sure not a person anybody's ever going to love. Mm. And so without realizing it, what I did is I gave my mother from the inside out control of my life. Mm. And when I was a sophomore in college, I went home to confront my mom and dad. And my mother took one look at me, walked out the back door, got in her car and drove off. And April never saw her again. I chose not to go to her funeral. I chose to go be with my dad after everybody had left him. But when my mother walked out that back door, she taught me a very valuable lesson that freed me mm -hmm. because I was living to prove to my mother she was wrong. Mm. And as long as I was doing that, my mother owned me emotionally mm -hmm. because I wasn't me. I was what she projected me to be. And when she walked out that door, it was like, it was just like God took a light and, and gave it to me out of darkness. Wow. And he said, Richard, you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. Mm -hmm. I made you in my image. I've given you unique talents. I've given you unique skills. And all I want you to do is take your uniqueness mm -hmm. and use it. And I remember that's where I, I learned the meaning of uh, one of my philosophies. And maybe one day you and I can just do an interview 
about the philosophies I live my life on. That'd be awesome. But one of those, and it's been a philosophy of freedom for me. Why spend my energy being a carbon copy when I'm the original? Amen. You know, I have a stage. You have a stage. Mm -hmm. And our stage will not remain the same throughout our life because our stages change. Absolutely. And, you know, if you'd have told me 32, 33 years ago that I'd be doing this with my life today, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> I can <laughs> understand that. <laughs> yeah, I never thought this would be where I'd be. But I'm on the stage that God wants me on. And I know this because I know that when you and I in life are standing on the stage that we're supposed to be standing on, we get three things. We get happiness, which is peace and joy. Mm -hmm. We get fulfillment which means I know I'm adding value and then I get freedom. I get the freedom to be me. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge anybody who's listening to this, anybody, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Are you an original or are you living as a carbon copy? Love Do that. you feel that you are free to be you? Conversation I had with a young man this morning was, Richard, I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't, and if I don't know who I am, I don't know what my purpose is. And so he lives in this world today that's locked hmm. into doubt, worry, and uncertainty. And every day he's giving up the most precious thing he has in life, the time to be himself. Truth. And I find this in so many people. Their great struggle is because they're living outside in because they don't have the inside strength to really understand that they're here for a purpose. I agree. Mm -hmm. And if God's given me one gift in life, it's the ability to take what is confusing and show people the pathway to clarity. And in my mentoring program, that's all I do. I simply help people to know how to ask their self the right questions. I mean, I get asked all the time, and I would imagine you get asked too. Well, if I work with you, what's going to happen? What am I going to get from this? And I tell people, I don't have the foggiest idea. <laughs> right. Because mm -hmm. it's not my job to write your script. Mm -hmm. It's my place in your life to guide you to the clarity to write your own script. I love that. And I have finally owned that guidance <laughs> because uh, we've had that conversation for many a year. Yeah, that it is, it is, and it, I'm proud of you because you. I think that I think you've come through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have uh, handled your biggest enemy, which was you in your world of doubt, worry, and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I think what, is, what has happened for you today is that you are claiming that belief, that trust, and that faith. And when, when you have that belief, that trust, and that faith, then your value to other people, I mean, it just creates that positive presence that's present when you're not present. Mm -hmm. And it was ironic that all of the things you just spoke about about that clarity was in the video that I set us up for before we did this video <laughs> of the journey of learning how to own my stage and the peace and the joy and the clarity and looking in the mirror and all of those statements were in my top seven so the exciting part is you um, and I thank you over and over again that you continue to impact lives and le empower leaders like myself and others to go empower others and uh, we are thankful for that and is there anything you want to make sure we close out on? Yeah, I'd like to just share with people a couple of things we have coming up. Please. Uh, once a month, we do a free webinar. Right. We don't charge people for it. And uh, our webinar is coming up this coming Thursday. It's at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And my topic for the webinar is understanding motivation. Because I think if you Google motivation, it's one of the top three words that people Google. Yet, I don't think people understand motivation. And one of the things we're going to talk about in the webinar, and the webinar is for an hour, and we're going to talk about that when you lack motivation, you create depression. Mm. 
the opposite of any life uh, that lacks motivation is that they have their own form of depression and there are all kinds of levels of impression of depression. Truth. So that's at 10 o'clock this coming Thursday AM. Uh, and then on Friday we have our question. And, and uh, by the way, with the uh, webinar, you just go to richardflint.com and you can sign up for it. And then um, Friday is our question and answer time. That's at 10 AM. And ma'am, this one's going to be interesting because our question is, what is your biggest concern about what's happening in our country today? Mm -hmm. And what it is, April, uh, it's a time where I do about three, five minutes on introduction, and then we open up the mics and we all talk and we get to share. And I tell everybody, you come to the Zoom classroom as a student, but be ready to become a teacher. And the insights are just unreal as to what we share. And then October one through four, uh, we're doing our next in our series of small group retreats and our retreats are limited to 15 people. And what we do is we take a topic and we make that our theme for the weekend and October one through four, our theme is decluttering your clutter. Mm -hmm. I think that clutter is the number one enemy for most people mm -hmm. and Clutter can kill you mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It can damage you physically. And on, uh, on my website, richardflint.com, there is a information about that. And there's a video there. Uh, so check it out. And then as you mentioned, uh, next July uh, is going to be our 30th uh, star maker and also our final star maker. It was to be j this July but I had to make one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my life. Mm -hmm. And that was to postpone it because of the COVID-19 virus. And man, I prayed about it. April, I struggled with it. And I know now that postponing it was the right decision. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's uh, July 9th, 9 through 11 next year at the PGA resort in Palm Beach gardens, Florida, uh, will be our 30th star maker. And our theme is I, w I can, because I will. And it, it's a powerful, powerful session. We limit it to 200 people. And again, it's on, a, it's on our website. Uh, and and if, if I created and have created any kind of a question for any of you that you're struggling with and you're, you're not sure what to do, reach out to me, richard at richardflint.com. Just share with me your question or your concern. And I'll get back to you. And I'll try to give you a piece of guidance that will help you uh, to be able to maybe step through confusion. Confusion is a barrier to our belief, our trust, and our faith. Mm -hmm. And so Richard, richardflint.com, help you any way I can. Uh, in any way that my talents, my experience, my life can help you, I would be willing to reach that back out to you. And uh, April, thank you. Thank you for letting me do this. And we will uh, absolutely have you say maybe in another month or two on uh, your philosophies. I would love to do that again. That would be a lot of fun. And we always, always walk away with a wonderful conversation. And uh, as uh, we are only allowing 40 rooms in our event that you're going to be speaking for us at the uh, summit in Gatlinburg at the Margaritaville. So uh, we are taking reservations for that as well. Um, the important thing is that Wherever an individual is wise enough to look in the mirror and allow somebody to give them the guidance, that's the most important thing is to allow them is to reach out and ask for help. Uh, because can I, can I leave you with one thought I've just finished working on? Please. Okay. That in today's world with all the uncertainty, you've got to, another thing you've got to put at the foundation of your life is your willingness to invest three A's in your life. Mm-hmm. You've got to be willing today to adapt. Mm -hmm. When you're willing to adapt, then you've got to be willing to make adjustments. And when you adapt and adjust, that means I've got to align my life around the path that the adapting and the adjusting has created. And you've got to bring those three A's to your life right now to have the calmness and the clarity to handle uh, this new unknown that we're living in. <laughs> and as you said that, I, my son asked me all the time, why do you always have three? And I said, I, I think I learned it from somebody. 
Thanks. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful weekend. Give your beautiful wife a big hug for me, and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank okay. you, Richard. Okie dokie. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.